This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and welcome again to Energy Wednesday, <laughs> our flagship uh, operation here for energy. Uh, I'm Sharon Moriwaki with the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum and with me co-host, our super uh, attorney here <laughs> from Watanabe Ing, our partner and he, the former consumer advocate. Jeff Watanabe, we're co-hosting. Jeff today. Ono. Uh, what did I, oh, <laughs> sorry, Jeff Ono, Jeff Thank Ono, you. sorry about no. that. Uh, Jeff Ono, who uh, we're co-hosting the last of our series on bioenergy, and, and uh, we'd like to hold that on for a little bit because we have Shannon Tagunan today, and mm -hmm. she's, gonna, she's from Hawaiian Electric. The spokesperson is going to tell us about a couple of programs in, at HECO. Yeah, the first one we want to bring up is yesterday we launched our um, request for proposals for pretty much the largest amount of renewable energy, variable renewable energy projects ever for, for the wine electric companies. So we're asking for proposals for you know, projects for 220 megawatts on Oahu, 60 megawatts for Maui, and 20 megawatts for Hawaii Island. So we're really excited about that. We want people to go to our website and check out, you know, all the information that you know that we have regarding the request for proposals. So what's what's all involved, and, and what's the timeline? Well, um, they have our qualifying proposals may be submitted through April 30th, 2018. So I think the, the best thing we can say is to go to the website. So it's HawaiianElectric.com slash competitive bidding and there you'll have pretty much all the information you'll need there's a lot of um, you know there's a transmittal letters so on and so forth so everything they need to know as far as how to qualify what the projects need to entail it can um, you can include energy storage with your project hmm. so I think that's you know a really enticing part of the so it just thing. just went out yesterday. Yeah, so. just yesterday. Yeah. It's good. Well, very good. And yeah. um, anything else you want to report, or unless Jeff has any questions about these two? No. Th well, these we're excited about this. Yeah. Uh, these are these are big projects, um, and we're also waiting for the firm dispatchable yeah. RFP, yeah. which should come out shortly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is for variable renewable projects. And and when is the deadline for? Um, for your decision making, or is that just open until? You know, I don't know exactly, but the proposals need to be submitted by April. By April, 30th. and then yeah. after that, there'll be a time when they're reviewed and, yes, and yes. projects. Nothing mm -hmm. on projects when they would come online or when you would actually. I don't have anything like that, but you know, this is very you know timely. Um, we just launched yesterday. They filed. Um, okay, we formally well, began the process yesterday. Well, you can come back, tell us where yeah. you are in April <laughs> or May. <laughs> and then we have an issue that we wanted to get out into the public. Um, we had a lot of scam calls to our mm. um, customers for Hawaiian Electric, Maui Electric, Hawaii Electric mm. Light, um, just in the past few days. Um, so Friday, we really got the word out. Um, some customers were getting as many as 10 calls. Really? Yeah, from scam artists. So we just wow. want people to know that. What kinds of things were coming in? They're asking, well, they're, first of all, they're telling people that they're, you know, they're late with their payments, that they oh. have to pay up, and, you know, to go to the nearest drugstore to get um, oh one of those prepaid cards. We would never ask our customers to pay with prepaid debit cards and, you know, that's just not what we do. So we just wanted to get the word out, let people know that, you know, if you get a call like that, just hang up and call the number that's printed on your bill, you know, the customer service mm -hmm. line. Call mm -hmm. that number, you know, ask whether your account, first, you know, verify. Mm -hmm. uh, most times, it's, it's just really a prank and it's mm -hmm. random and people don't know anything about your account. So, you know, just call to confirm that it's a prank call and just report 
that it's happening so that we're aware. So is that number on, on your bill, is that where they should call and also report? Any definitely, of these calls? definitely, our customer service line. And then we also um, just want to let people know that they can also visit our website. Um, you know, Hawaii, and that is hawaiianelectric.com, mauielectric.com, hawaiielectriclight.com slash um, stop scan. Mm. Yeah. And then that's about so, it. Have any other questions for Shannon? No, I just want to say if my mom is watching, please take note. <laughs> yeah, please <laughs> just hang out. Everybody take. Yeah. You want to say any more about how, how to prevent, you know, getting scammed? Well, I think so talking the, the number two. <laughs> number two. Okay. We really just want people to to hang up and then do not call the number on the the caller ID because they have they're very sophisticated and it'll show Hiko, Miko, or Helko, but that's not the correct number. You'll just be calling the scammers back. So we just want to make sure that you're you're protected and that you call the right numbers when you get these types so of calls. do not call the number yeah, back. Yeah, do not call the number back. Okay, you heard that here. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you, you so Shannon. much for having me. So come me. back and let us know about your bids coming in yes, and about definitely. any other projects you okay. have. Okay, thank Thanks you. Thanks for coming. Thanks, I appreciate Shannon. the time. Okay. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? They said I could play, so any chance to play at all, you know, that's my life. I love music. Yeah. I saw it. Match day is no ordinary day. The pitch, hallowed ground for players and supporters alike. Excitement builds. Game plans are made with responsibility in mind. Celebrations are underway. Ready for kickoff, MLS clubs and our supporters rise to the challenge. We make responsible decisions while we cheer on our heroes and toast their success. Elevate your match day experience. If you drink, never drive. I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea comes on every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join us. I like to bring in guests that talk about all types of things that come across the sea to Hawaii. Not just law, love, people, ideas, history. Please join us for Law Across the Sea. Well, thank you. Uh, we're back. We're back. And we're lucky today to have two guests from Hawaii Gas. Uh, to my left, we have uh, Aaron Kirk. He's the Vice President of Marketing and Business Development. And, and next to him is Mr. Rich DeGarmo. He is the Director of Projects. And today we're, we're going to be talking about uh, renewable gas and biogas to keep with our theme of biofuels for the month of February. So let me start with, with Aaron. Sure. You know, can, you, can you help us by defining renewable gas and biogas? Sure, sure. It's good to be here. Thanks for having us. Um, renewable natural gas is, um, it's, it is biogas that's captured from renewable sources. Um, it is, um, a, it's a piece of our energy diversity that, that we use to service our customers with natural gas in Hawaii. And, and Rich, I understand you're responsible for Hawaii Gas's, you know, first uh, mm -hmm. biogas project. Can, can you tell us about that? Right. We have a project going on at Honolulu Wastewater Treatment Plant where we're going to be taking the biogas from the anaerobic digesters and upgrading it to biomethane, which is about 96% methane, and putting in, injecting that into our pipeline. 
and all the gas generated at the wastewater treatment plant is renewable natural gas and it's not a fossil fuel because it's actually cycling the carbon in the atmosphere that's existing already and it's not releasing any sequestered carbon at all. So is that up and running now or is it in process? Or where, where are you in your project? Right now the equipment is being fabricated. Uh, ah. We're going to be using membrane systems to separate the carbon dioxide from the methane. Uh, it's being fabricated. We should be up and running by sep middle of September of this year. Oh. Oh. So previously the, the waste methane that was produced at the wastewater treatment facility was just flared off. And so we spent the last five years negotiating and um, coming up with the technical solutions to capture uh, the, the waste gas and actually inject it into our pipeline so that we, wow. can, we can actually use it instead of it So when you being. say flared off, does that mean like where did it go? Like they just burned, yep. and you just lost all of the, all yeah, of that. Yeah, so, so the, the wastewater treatment plant produces methane as a byproduct, so they would flare it off uh, just so that the methane is not released into the atmosphere. No. So flaring it off oh, okay. um, chemically breaks it apart so it's no longer so methane. It's not toxic. Yeah, so mm -hmm. instead of just flaring it off now, we can actually use, use it, it for cooking, for drying clothes, um, for heating water. So, Rich, how much gas are you going to actually be able to, to get from the Honolulu uh, project? Right now we're estimating about 800,000 therms per year. And what, what is that in the equivalent to, uh, you know, in maybe kilowatt hours or, you know, how, how, how would you get our... our, it our, would, our yeah. The 800,000 therms would replace approximately 12,000 barrels of oil per year. Okay. So you're going to... You're actually displacing that much oil that you would Hawaii gas would other you otherwise use to make synthetic natural Correct. gas. Oh, that's fantastic! Mm, wow. are, are there oh, other projects fast. like that in in the works? Uh, on on the island of Oahu, there are three other places that are producing methane from anaerobic fermentations. Uh, we're looking at trying to acquire those as well. Okay, so wh where are those those other places? Uh, basically, it's uh, other wastewater treatment plants and and the landfill. Is, is any wastewater treatment plant available to you know for this kind of uh, uh, you know use by Hawaii Gas? No, not all not all the wastewater treatment plants have anaerobic digestion. Some are aerobic processes. So basically, only the anaerobic digestion. Uh, facilities would produce so, the So methane. what, are, what are, can you differentiate the anaerobic and aer aerobic? Anaerobic <laughs> is basically being processed without oxygen. Okay. So it's sort of an alien environment for us. It produces okay. the methane, it produces the hydrogen sulfide, it produces other gases that we don't really care about. So you can't just screen it out or do anything with it. You, you're just, you just don't use it. Well, you, the biogas you can use. Uh, they have actually made engines that can run directly off of it, hmm. but you still have to clean the other hmm. contaminants out of it. So Hawaii Gas is interested in capturing all of the available renewable natural gas in the state, and we're actively pursuing all usable renewable natural gas hmm. currently. Wow. Tell us a little about uh, landfill gas. How, how would you capture landfill gas? Is it the same as wastewater treatment gas? It, it's similar. Basically, in the land, capped landfills, it's an anaerobic environment as well. And they produce the methane gases. And what, they, what they're doing now is they actually drill wells down into the uh, mm. landfill itself and then vent the gases up. And those are now being flared as well. So is that technology available so that you could capture methane from Waimanalo, the Waimanalo dump? Yes, it is. It, it, ah. it would take a, it's a little bit more pre-processing to take some of the, there's other contaminants in it that we would need to remove, but it's just additional processing. So would that eliminate our landfills? I mean, that's one of the biggest problems in the state, and we don't have much land, and, and it's filled with landfill, I mean, you know, all the waste. And if you did use your process, would that somehow detoxify or the, the whatever is there and, and use all that energy? Or what, I mean, what can you do to reduce the landfill? Landfill. <laughs> <laughs> no, there, if we go into source separation and things like that, where we can separate out the organics, uh -huh. and then you could actually process those in an anaerobic digester. 
but as far as the landfill itself, that's going to stay there. Uh, it's not optimum conditions in the landfill to produce the methane. Mm. They want to keep it dry rather than wet. Mm. But what uh, we can do is we can capture the methane that's already being produced and uh, we can actually, instead of them flaring it off or it yeah, getting a type it. of accidental release into the atmosphere, we can actually use it to, produ to produce wow. energy. That's good. Well, how many years yeah. out are we bef uh, from capturing all of the, the methane from uh, wastewater treatment plants on Oahu and uh, from uh, Limonalo? Yeah. We're ready to go as soon as the owners of the biogas will let us. Okay. Yeah, well, it, took, it was a long process getting Honolulu. Um, and that took what, about five years, yes. and so we're in process with the others, and we're, we're actively pursuing them, and uh, we, we're ready so to go. Was, what was the biggest challenge in getting the landfill owners, like Honolulu, Hon to uh, to c come on board and, and have you know this kind of mo as a model to do other places? I, I think it's just a process. We're we're the first in the state to to be uh, purchasing it and using it for energy production. So it's just, it's a process that has to be gone through and, um, you know, there was an RFP put out and we had to put in our bid and um, it just, mm. it, it, things take time. And, and then have a PUC approval for the yeah. uh, power or the mm. fuel pur purchase agreement. Mm. Mm. Well, and can you tell me about, um, you know, you, you're, you're capturing this methane and it, it's, it's going to be flared off. So why isn't the city just giving you the gas? Are they selling you the gas? Yes. But why aren't they just giving it to you? <laughs> yeah. It's going to be wasted. We're yeah, open. Yeah. We're <laughs> open to receiving yeah. the gas <laughs> if they're willing to give it to us. <laughs> but you're actually having to pay for you're it. Yes. We, we do. We do pay for it, and when we look at it as a contribution. Um, you know, it's going to a good cause. Obviously, it's the, you know <laughs> the city. It, it, when 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 you uh, when you you pay for it, at least you you're contributing to the. Uh, you're buying the resource. And you're producing and paying. <laughs> that sounds like an interesting deal. <laughs> well, Aaron, are there other sources of renewable gas that Hawaii Gas is really looking into? Yes, we're actually, uh, we're, we're starting, we, we've looked at many different uh, options. Um, in fact, uh, I'll let Rich talk a little bit about um, uh, some of the previous ones. Right now, we're looking into bio crops. So there are several crops that can be grown, they can be harvested three and sometimes four times a year uh, without being picked, you just, you just cut them. You run the, the crops through an anaerobic digester and uh, it actually makes methane. So we're actively pursuing uh, land right now to grow those crops to, to make true renewable natural gas. Is, is that technology um, at commercial operation type scale? It is not here in Hawaii. We'll be the first to to operate here in Hawaii at a, at a commercial scale, but um, across the country and other parts of the world, it is being used. Oh, that's fantastic! It's large scale in Europe. Mm. Okay. So, what does your equipment look like? The thing that you're bringing in with the membranes and all of that. What? What? Beautiful. What? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't bring a picture. <laughs> what, what? Basically, what it's it? going to be a 40 foot ISO container, so it's all self contained. It's all self, like a big yeah. tank. A con uh, like a shipping container. Oh. And then there will be a couple external vessels for the activated carbon cleanup and some refrigeration and heat exchange. So like how big is, I mean, how much space, how much land is It will take up the footprint of two 40-foot ISO containers. It's not that large. Oh. Less than 2,000 square feet. And where is it going to be placed? It's going to be placed l pretty close to where the anaerobic digesters are at Hanauliuli. Oh. Hmm. Now, another thing we keep hearing about is hydrogen and, uh, you know, hydrogen being used in fuel cells. Yeah, and I know that the, the processing for the synthetic natural gas produces hydrogen. Are you able to capture that hydrogen and, and effectively use it in, in fuel cells? Mm -hmm. Yes. I, actually, what we do right now is we capture and uh, utilize more hydrogen than any other utility in the world, correct me if I'm wrong, Rich. That way, we have the <coughs> highest concentration of hydrogen in our mm -hmm. pipeline than yep. any utility. Yep. So we actually we actually capture the hydrogen, and it, it's part of it's part of our pipeline gas in a higher concentration than any other gas utility. Well, are you, are you able to store it and then um, use it in, <coughs> in fuel cell vehicles, for example? We could use a, we could capture a very small amount here in Hawaii. We did, we did a, a pilot project several years ago and spent a considerable amount of resources researching hydrogen, and hydrogen's a great fuel, uh, and, and we will continue to look at it, uh, but it's very expensive uh, to produce. 
um, most of the hydrogen on the mainland is produced from fossil fuels right now, which right. would defeat the purpose. So um, looking at uh, producing hydrogen uh, in, in other cleaner methods is very expensive and would bring costs up by about 10 times. So uh, that, that obviously made us abandon the pilot. Mm -hmm. Are we, we have time? I have another question sure. because okay. if, if it is a byproduct, why, why is it still costly? Because the hydrogen, I mean, we're looking at hydrogen as a state and mm -hmm. how we could use it as fuel. So um, how, how can it, what is the cost in, in the hydrogen if, in fact, it's a byproduct of what you're doing already? Rich is our chemist, so I'll let him <laughs> <laughs> well, Right now, we, we manufacture hydrogen at the plant, S&G plant, and we're basically making 98% pure hydrogen. Hmm. Uh, the economics are off scale because of the such a little use of the hydrogens on island and the cost of the purification equipment so high. To run it in a hydrogen fuel cell you need 5,9 hydrogen which is 99.999% pure. Hmm. So you need some pretty good equipment to take it from 98% oh, on wow. up. Hmm. I got another oh. question. I, I know Hawaii Gas uh, experimented with uh, the biosynthesis plant T tell, tell us what that was and, and what were you attempting to do? Yeah, that, that's where we were taking the waste fats and oils from the restaurants and we were trying to gasify those into uh, methane and propane. Uh, the process works, it's, it's done elsewhere as well, but the cost of processing it and cleaning up the byproducts was made it cost prohibitive. When you say cost, is it in the equipment or is it in manpower or what, what is the cost cost? The, the cost was in the treatment of the wastewater that was produced uh, from the process itself. So uh, that, for, that for, the, for the actual chemical processing to split the emulsion as well as the disposal. So it's uh, equipment that you need to do that or oh, how? No, it's chemicals and so all of the supplies that you have. The supplies to and the final disposal cost. And the other issue is scalability. There's just not enough of the fats and oils in Hawaii to offset um, a, a, enough oh, to make it economical. So you don't have the supply to actually. Yeah, yeah. So uh, really, renewable natural gas is, is our future. And renewable natural gas coming from wastewater treatment plants, landfills, and bio crops. And, and we're working on those uh, very quickly. We're, we're implementing them now. Hmm. Um, Hana Uli Uli is, uh, is our first, but, uh, but it definitely won't be our last. That's good. Sounds good. No, wow, we're, it's yeah, the future. This, this is exciting. How many years is it going to take before you can, you can make a significant dent with, with the renewable natural gas? I think we're already making a significant dent just with Honolulu. Uli. Um, and as others come online, it, it just, it's just going to get um, more of a percentage of renewables. Uh, the timeline is really dependent on how long this process takes from a bureaucratic standpoint. Um, there's you know, the paperwork, the approvals, all of those things. So you're still in process. I thought you got the approval by the PUC and, and then you're moving ahead. For, for, for Honolulu. Oh, yes. so for not each for, new not project. Not for the others. Yeah. So it's not like a model, so you could just kind of, you know, stamp it in other places. I would imagine it will get faster <laughs> as, as, as it becomes a, a little more commonplace. It'll, it'll hopefully speed up. So you're the model. You're the ones who are the guinea pig doing this whole thing, and everybody can follow. Hawaii Gas exactly. is always excited and happy to be the, the guinea pig, and we try to we try to be a leader in, in renewables. That's great. And That's that great. Our, our uh, pilot program with hydrogen, and then the fats and oils, um, and then now you know, with bio crops and with the landfills and uh, wastewater treatment plants, That's we're trying terrific. to be a leader. Good. Yeah. That's fantastic. It's good. Thank you. Well, and th I want to thank both, both Rich and, and Aaron for coming on our show. Uh, this has been, you know, very educational for me. Yes, thank you. and I think for the public. Definitely. So, yeah, we, we, we want to hear more when you get more and more into this and when you get your equipment. <laughs> there, there, <laughs> there will be site tours. <laughs> oh, yeah, we've got to, yeah, we've got to publicize that so people can see what, what the equipment looks like. And, and I would imagine that as each pr project comes online, the cost will go down and it'll get uh, less expenses, expensive to do each project. We hope so. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, definitely, that's, that's definitely part of the model is this, the, scale, yeah. the, the scale is everything, scalability. Right. 
So this, this uh, Honolulu Uli project and, and your equipment that's coming in, it's customized for that project or like do you, what you're expecting to, to reap from it? Is that right. It, it's sized to handle the biogas volume going into it and the biomethane volume coming out of it. But it, it, it can be sim. We've sized it large enough that it can also be used elsewhere. Well, I've been told to wrap up here. Oh, so. Okay. Sharon, wow, th thank okay. you for allowing me to be your co-host. Oh, and, I love and, you all the time coming on. And you can come back again too, Rich. Yeah, we and love to have Hawaii Gas. Yeah. Thank you for Hawaii having gas. us on thank the show. You. Thank you. And this has been really, really educational. Thank, thank you, you very much. All right, thank you. Aloha.